Hi friends, it's the third week of June. How is your summer going? I hope by now that you and or your kids are done with some schoolwork and that you're able to actually take a rest. My boys finished their finals last week and there's just something about waking up that first day after finals knowing that you have the ability to rest that part of your brain. Today, I'm going to be talking about rest. It's something that we long for, we make plans to do it, and yet we struggle to accept the invitation that God gives us to return to rest. I'm going to share my struggle with rest, and I'm going to talk about how God was there for me when I was forced to do it. Yes, you heard me. I was forced. I am Sherry Fletcher, and this is your spiritual game plan, change. It's something that happens to all of us. You've invested your time and energy into an important role, sometimes for years, and then suddenly it's time for you to move on. Maybe you've worked hard on a dream, and now your path is taking a new turn, but that dream isn't going with you. Perhaps you've raised your kids and they've moved on, but now your empty nest is filled with parent care. Or maybe you're in the middle of diaper changes and laundry piles. If you find yourself asking questions like, where do I fit in anymore? Am I even relevant? How do I find my purpose now? You are in the right place. This is the show for women in a season of transition I believe that while your roles in life will change, your purpose is eternal. I'm here to help you understand just how intentionally you were made by a creator with a game plan. Together, we'll discover ways to help you unlock the purpose God's placed in you, develop a game plan for your life's calling, and embrace the intentional masterpiece you were created to be. When was the last time you chose to rest? To be quiet and to trust in God, to let him restore you. How would you even define the word rest? For me, I used to think that it meant the same thing as being lazy and unmotivated. God knew that we would struggle and resist rest. And that's why he reminds us to stop and take one. He even set the example for us. When he finished his work, he stopped to rest. God's rest is not like human rest. In Isaiah 40, 28, we are told that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the earth, never faints nor is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. So God's rest didn't have anything to do with him being tired. He rest in the sense that he stopped. He stopped from creative work. He stopped and he gave us an example of rest. And he still invites us to return to that rest. I grew up attending the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So remembering to stop and observe the Sabbath was a part of my life. But yet I was not resting. I wasn't fully stopping. I was not accepting God's invitation to do so. I was too busy. I had stuff to do. I had a young family and responsibilities. And I also had the mindset that if I didn't do it, who would do it? Well, four years ago, when I was in the middle of my nonstop life, I was unexpectedly stopped. Have you heard the term hitting a wall? Or if you're a runner, there's a term called bonked. For a non-napping person, I was finding that I could not stay awake after about 3 p.m. I had bonked. I went to see my doctor and he said, pretty much, you need to stop. He also told me that I had brought a kind of immune deficiency upon myself by doing all things. 
Well, the first thing out of my mouth was, well, I don't have time for this. Yeah, right, classic. <laughs> but my second one then was, well, how quick is, can we cure this? Well, it turns out there is no cure, only a treatment. My treatment plan, slow down. Eliminate all the peripheral obligations and balance your rest. He said I needed to start removing responsibilities from my schedule. Sounds lovely, right? Well, not for me. I am much more of a Martha than a Mary. For me, my stewardship has always included a lot of peripheral obligations like committees and planning events and hosting people in my home. I actually enjoy these things. So why would I want to remove them? Clearly, my expression of stewardship needed to change in this new season in life for me. For me to continue serving, I needed to rest. I needed full restoration. My doctor explained that all of my peripheral obligations were like tabs open on a computer. My life being the desktop and my brain being the computer. Think of it this way. You have a slow computer. Open tabs might be to blame. The more tabs that you have open, the more random access memory or RAM is being used. And this slows down the computer. I had so many mental tabs open, I was running very low on resources. All of my activities were rewarding, fun and fulfilling, but they took energy and I was not replacing that energy through rest. This kept me in a constant state of anxiety and on the brink of burnout. My doctor told me that I needed to start taking things off my plate. Well, if you know me, um, he should have said platter. Choosing what to eliminate was hard. Telling people that I needed to rest actually felt like a lame excuse to get out of obligations. But part of that stretching and growing process for me was in the surrender. I actually had to admit to myself that I could no longer keep the pace that I was trying to maintain. When he told me to balance my energy output with rest, I really had no idea what he meant. At first, I thought all I needed to do was take a daily nap, maybe go to sleep an hour earlier. But he explained that I needed to look at the cognitive energy that I was putting into constantly running through my to-do list. I was actually working on physical tasks and my brain was running ahead working on the next project that I would need to complete. It was during that time that I saw a review on Instagram for a book called Sacred Rest. Recover your life, renew your energy, restore your sanity, written by Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith. That book and her message were just what the doctor ordered. Dr. Saunders' information on the different kinds of rest was crucial to my now recovering and restoring soul. Being a doctor herself, Dr. Saunders combines scientific research with her own personal stories and great spiritual insight. I find myself highlighting and turning corners down and scribbling on so many of the pages. One of the points that she made is to pay attention to what she calls low yield activities. That point being, I needed to limit or eliminate all activities that failed to yield consistent positive gains. That meant I had to admit a lot of my peripheral activities fell under that category. They drained my mental space versus filling it. I didn't have to give up everything, but for the activities that I did keep, I've kept a schedule giving them a specific day and a time. And that has allowed my brain to block them from other days of the week and helped eliminate all the anxiety I was having to unfinished work lying ahead. God gives us 
an invitation to rest. But like all invitations, it's up to us to accept it. My friend Nikki Hardy wrote that you are worthy of rest, not because you earned it, but because he did. And we find our rest in him. So what does my rest in him look like? For me, it's as simple as be still and know. I adopted that motto and soon friends gave me mugs, a pillow, cards, and screensavers with that verse on it to remind me because they know me very well. Be still and know what? Well, if you read the whole verse found in Psalms 46, it says, number one, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. And number two, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. In fact, that last one is repeated twice. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God has been reminding me to be still and to know that he is my fortress in various ways. From being in his word to music lyrics Instagram posts that pop up in my feed, words from friends, and books like Sacred Rest. So if you're asking, God, why am I so drained? Perhaps his answer for you is the same he gave me. My child, you wouldn't stop and let me do the work. Remember, I'm the fortress. Maybe you're wondering, God, why am I having so much anxiety? He might be saying, child, you don't fully grasp that I've got this. You get so worked up with fear of unknown. Just be still and know I am your refuge. I am your strength and I'm an ever present help in trouble. Be still and know. This is God's answer for my overwhelmed, immune deficient, anxiety ridden self. And it's his answer for you too. In her book, Dr. Sonder reminds us that we would rather struggle than rest. We would rather work under the sense of obligation than learn to surrender to peace. We're actually afraid to rest. I was asking God, what does that mean? Do I need to be still physically? Do I need to be still mentally? Do I need to be still emotionally? Do I even need to be still spiritually? His answer, yes. Be still and find rest in knowing that I am God. Isaiah 30, 15 says, you will be delivered by returning and resting. Your strength will lie in quiet confidence. Friends, if you're feeling out of control, full of anxiety and overwhelmed with the craziness of this earth, I hope that you will accept God's invitation, his gift of rest. Find comfort and peace in being held. I've had a phrase said to me several times in the last year, just hang in there. When that is said to me, I sometimes will stop them and say, oh no, I am not hanging. I am not having to use my own strength to hold on. I know that at any moment I will lose that strength and I will fall. But God says in Isaiah 41 10, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So I am not hanging in there. I am being held in there. I can let go. I can rest. Now in this new season of life, as I accept the invitation of rest, and I allow God to do the work through me, my body is restored, my faith is strengthened, and my heart finds comfort knowing he is God. I have come to know 
that either he is exalted or I am exhausted. I hope that you will accept his invitation to rest, to be still and know. Take an inventory of the open tabs in your mind that are constantly running and depleting your energy and prayerfully ask God to show you what you need to close or even delete. And I would love to hear what those tabs are so that I can pray that you feel the same peace as you allow God to be your refuge and your strength. Have you subscribed to this podcast? If not, please do so. That way you do not miss any up and coming episodes. And I value your feedback. When you leave a rating and a review, it helps to get the word out about the podcast. It also lets me know how I can continue to serve you. During today's episode, did a friend come to mind who you know would be blessed? If so, I would love it if you'd share a link with them. Listeners like you sharing links with others is how this podcast can reach more people. I'd love to hear from you. Ways to connect with me are in the show notes or simply at sherryfletcher.com. Thanks again for listening to Your Spiritual Game Plan, the podcast that shares God's plan and your purpose in it.